shoulders. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Welcome to the Elite. Oh, and we have Alisa and friends. And wait, <laughs> there's a hand in the background. Yes, yes. Welcome, everyone. I am Monique Dusan. And I am Krista Bontrager. And we are the co-hosts of All The Things Podcast. But today, it's not about us or All The Things. It's all about Elisa Childers and her book, Another Gospel. Thank you for being with us. What's up, y'all? Hi. Can you guys say hi? Hello. <laughs> this is Aiden and Dylan and Mike's around Dude, here somewhere. Dude, help us. You've been at our house. <laughs> yeah, we've yeah, been to your house. Yes. <laughs> and where's my, my husband, the man behind all of this amazing YouTubeness is Mike. Yeah. Yes. Woo! Fam. <laughs> yes. Aiden, keep the faces coming. Yes. Yes, we see you, Dylan. That's awesome. Oh, we're we're so glad to uh be part of your party cuz we know that it is a family affair. Writing a book, people don't yeah. understand. Writing a book is hard. That's it's, why yeah. I, I haven't done a, a full length book. It is hard. It takes a long time, right, Aiden? It does. Yes. Mom, right. are you done yet? Mom, are you almost finished? How much longer is this chapter going to be? <laughs> I know. All right. They know what that's like, huh? When mommy has to write. But I try to write mostly when they're at school. So. Yeah. He, well, like, I'm in school if you like write. So you can <laughs> yes. We are so glad to be able to talk about another gospel, oh, the yeah. process, ask some questions. We have some amazing guests lined up. If you are watching, you are definitely in for a treat. Again, thank you so much for joining us and for supporting. This is going to be a really, really good one. Awesome, Aiden. All right, we wanna tell people that you can still pre-order the book and join Elisa's special Facebook group for the pre-order. So the window is closing on yes. joining the group. Y'all got like 54 minutes. Don't play no games. <laughs> so why don't you tell people a little bit about how they can pre-order Elisa and what are the, the perks that they're going to get if they do that? Right. So we're doing some bonuses with the pre-orders. Now the book comes out technically tomorrow. So we're going to do the pre-order bonus special through tomorrow at midnight. But it, when Monique says you got 54 minutes, you have 54 minutes to pre-order and be a part of the private book club that we have going on on Facebook with over a thousand people in it already. It's just been so much fun and so awesome. But you have 54 minutes to get into there because right after this, I'm going to go live in that private Facebook book club group with a special guest, a secret special guest, and we'll have another giveaway there. But I'm also going uh, live with an ex-progressive Christian who's going to help answer some questions about how to reach our progressive Christian friends and how to talk to them. And so it's going to be a great live stream. So that will happen at 8 p.m. Central time. So whatever your time zone is based on that, but that's going to be right after this. So you definitely want to pre-order the book and then head over. I put a link in the YouTube comments and on Facebook, but you go to facebook.com slash another gospel book club, and you can request membership and put in your receipt number there to get into that group, to be a part of that live stream tonight. So we want to tell people how they can go pre-order the book. I think we got a little graphic here uh, telling people no. maybe, maybe not. So they can, you can go it anywhere. Yeah, Amazon, you can just Nova, go to Amazon Facebook. and pre-order the book. You can go to alisachilders.com slash backslash another gospel and get the lowdown on all the freebies and all of that. So go, uh, go order, pre-order. Yes. Okay. Pre order and then join the special Facebook chat right after that. Yes. All right. Yes. Okay. All right. So if you want to talk to us, you can go on YouTube on Elisa Childers YouTube channel. We're also streaming to three different Facebook streams. Yes. So as you are talking to us, you also can qualify for giveaways throughout the broadcast. Elisa's husband is going to be monitoring all of those comments. So by commenting, you are also entering for the giveaways. And so we have special giveaways connected to all our special guests. Yes. So there will be multiple giveaways. So it, if you make a comment, that means you are getting entered to potentially win. Yes. Now, so, now can it be any comment? Can it be like, hi, 
Or does it need yeah. to be like a meaty comment? Yeah, it can just be like, hi, I'm here. All Absolutely. right. Because we're going to randomly pick a winner from each of the platforms. So all three Facebook streams and the YouTube stream, wow. we'll pick a winner from each one of those. So anywhere you want to comment, you are entering to win a special prize that is connected with some special guests we're going to have. So well, let me yeah. get up in here and make me a comment or three. You can't, you don't <laughs> qualify. You're, you're an insider. Auntie, <laughs> don't let her come for me like that. <laughs> all right. You already have a book. I do. I already have a book. You guys. Look, we have we are surrounded by books and I love it. <laughs> I love it. All right. Now, we have a couple of questions. We have questions. We do. We have yes. some questions. Um, and it, our questions are really to help people understand some of the behind the scenes of what the process was like in writing the book, not just the run of the mill questions that you, and not to say that interviews are just run of the mill. But, you know, sometimes when you do an interview, like they stick with the same questions. We want to get some of that juicy stuff behind the scenes questions. <laughs> so Chris is going to go back to the page so yeah. I can make sure that I right. ask the right question. Right. Praise <laughs> the Lord. Um, the first question is, what kept you encouraged during the process of writing this book? Because writing, I can tell you, that is a long haul. Get yeah. Doing that. It's a long haul and it's, it can be really discouraging, especially when you're trying to integrate so many different elements because the book is so story driven. Um, and so it's hard to communicate apologetics information essentially through the vehicle of storytelling. And so it can be a little bit discouraging, even trying to wrestle a chapter to the ground, so to speak. So how did I stay encouraged? Well, if I'm honest, I think probably the most discouraging thing about writing this particular book was just the glacier of research I had to do that was frankly not very comfortable for me. I had to read a whole lot of books written by people I disagree with on really fundamental things. And that can wear on you. I think that could wear on anyone. And so I think I stayed encouraged by staying connected with good friends. Um, staying in the word was really important to make sure that I didn't get distracted writing this book or researching this topic or looking up this fact, but making sure that everything started with reading the word and really getting God's word uh, just in my bones every single day that, that I was writing this book. And I didn't always do that perfectly, but that was the goal. But I, I stayed encouraged. Um, also, I think I walked a lot and I started running while I, while I was writing this book. Um, I was always that person that if you said, hey, let's go for a run, I would have been like, yeah, no thanks, <laughs> never. But I actually fell in love with running during the writing process. So I did a lot of thinking while I was running. I actually um, found myself worshiping while I was running and praying. So um, yeah, just uh, several things that God sort of little gifts he gave me to keep me encouraged through this process as well. Yeah. How, how long did it take you to write the book? Like, when did you start? It took me close to a year. So uh, I think it was about 10 months, maybe 11. Of course, Tyndale was amazing because even after I turned in the manuscript, I still made a bunch of changes and added a whole bunch of stuff. They were so, so flexible mm. to work with me on that. So I feel like even after I turned the book in, it was still months of rewriting and adding and padding things here and there and adding to the story and uh, supplementing points and buttressing points. And so um, it, was a, it was a year, a good, a good year, I think. Wow. I mean, if you got to run in order to get a book, I'm never going to get a book. <laughs> I'm to, you know me? what though? You never know. You might just start running one day and you're like, I'm running and I'm going to write a book. That's kind of how it happened. I'd never planned on running. I only run if you're chasing me. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to put that out there. Where, where's, yeah. where's, the, where's the most unusual place that you worked on the book that yeah. you wrote it? Because I, I remember going to the park a lot. I was working on a book for my employer and my kids were young and I remember sitting on a lot of park benches trying to write my book. What, yeah. what are some of the unusual places that you went to, to work? Well, let's see. I, I wrote a whole bunch of it that right here in this office mm. space that when I was writing the book was not yet a podcast studio. So it was just sort of a desk and an office. Um, I, I, I admit I wrote a lot of it just sitting in bed with my laptop. <laughs> um, and then it, about midway through, um, I was really feeling the pressure to mm. get this 
wrapped up and, and make sure that I had written everything on time. And so I ended up spending a lot of days at Panera, actually. So I wrote a lot of this book at the Panera by my house. And this was pre-COVID, of course, so everything was, was open. And I would just get a big iced tea and kind of nurse on that in the corner of the Panera booth there and um, wrote a good bit of, wow. of this book. And so there were certain parts I had to be closer to home because um, I wasn't using online material. Uh, I have a whole bunch of books on Kindle that I can access right there from my laptop, but I also have a lot of physical books that I used. So when I was using the physical books, I had to stay closer to home unless I just wanted, you know, a backpack full of stuff. <laughs> but um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of, I can't say there's really anywhere that's crazy unusual. Some of it was out by the pool. So when my kids were swimming, I would sit uh, and just work uh, while they were swimming and tried to work mostly while they were at school. But then over the summer, the book was due in September, October, I think. And so I had to write some over the summer. So the pool was a clever place to to get to write. <laughs> now, did you... Um... Like when you realized like truth and you came out of that whole like deconstruction and all of that, did you say, you know what, I'm going to write a book. This is exactly what I'm going to do. Or was there something else that led to the the thought of I'm going to write a book? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, no, I in fact, what's so funny about my story is. And for anybody watching who's not familiar, I, I actually did post this on my personal Facebook. So there might be people from my high school or people that don't really know what I've been up to for the last few years who are like, what's this book about? Um, essentially, just for, for those people to catch up, this book chronicles my journey through a really dark time of doubt I had about what I believed about Christianity, about Jesus and God, as a result of a class that I took uh, at a church, really. So the, the kind of attacks on what I believed were coming from within the church. And so that's why I think it was so extra confusing. And so I went through a, a period of probably five solid years. I'm really bad with timelines, but I think it was something about that where I was studying just really intensely, reading scholarship, reading lay level books, reading everything I could get my hands on, auditing classes at seminaries, just trying to get to the bottom of, is this really true? And what reasons do I have to, to say that it's true? And so the church that where my faith was challenged went on to identify itself as a progressive Christian community. So we've got this progressive Christianity that I had never really heard that phrase before. Um, but then I started seeing that phrase everywhere, everywhere, and I realized, oh, that's what I was encountering at that church. And so um, when I was sort of when God, I gosh, dig, when God was digging me out of this pit of doubt with all of this evidence and information, archaeology, history, uh, all kinds of biblical scholarship, I never thought I was going to write a book. I never thought I would even have a blog. I, in fact, um, I'll probably tell a little bit about this with one of our guests that's going to be on. But I remember at the time, just about a month before I started my blog, I actually shut down my Facebook. I went off social media and I was like, I'm done. I'm not going to, I'm never going to have a blog. There are enough blogs in the world. Everybody's blogging. Everybody has an opinion and the world just doesn't need another blog. Right. And it was, and I'll tell the story in a moment later with one of the guests, how I actually started that blog. But after I started the blog, uh, I, I started to focus in on progressive Christianity because I think so many people were facing it in their own churches. And so, uh, again, I didn't want to write a book. I, I People had kind of said, we need a book about this. And I'm like, great, somebody write that book. And <laughs> somebody needs to write a book on progressive Christianity. That would be great. But um, I, I kind of got the push to do that. And then I started researching. So I spent two solid years researching progressive Christianity, reading all the books and the blogs and listening to the podcast, just trying to really understand what defines this movement, what they're teaching, why they deny so many of the core tenets of Christianity and how to, how to articulate that better. And I started blogging more about that. And so then I had a blog post that actually went viral and it was a book review of a progressive Christian book. And when it went viral, that's when 
uh, about two years after I started researching all this. And that's when I started getting uh, emails from publishing houses and agents. And it was really clear that the momentum was heading that this is the time. Like if I'm ever going to do this, I got to pull the trigger now. And so it really happened sort of against my will because like with me kicking and screaming, because I, I didn't want to write this book. I didn't think I could write a book. I didn't think that I had it in me to put that many words on a page. And so this has been a process where God has really been faithful to help me and equip me and show me the way. And uh, so I'm, I'm really thankful, not just for his faithfulness in that process, but just his faithfulness through my whole story. Uh, I know that he was there in those darkest times of doubt, even when I couldn't feel his presence like I used to. And so, yeah, this has really just been a God thing. I hate to use that cliche, but it really was because I really didn't want to. And then it was like, okay, I have to. That's awesome. All right. We have our first surprise guest uh, who's come into the waiting room. Oh, so we're Should going I meet our guest before he comes on or meet our guest. There he is. Let's see. Hello. Da, 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 da. It's Mark Middleberg. Hey, so, how are you doing, hi, Lisa? Mark? You I'm guys are having well. fun. Yeah, this is a party. This is a, this is a real party. Well, so, I'm privileged to be part of it. I love this. So, Elisa, why don't you introduce us to Mark and for those people that don't know him and what role yeah. he played in your journey? Yeah, so all of the guests that are coming on tonight have played some kind of a role in this book being sent out into the world. And so Mark is a uh, author. I mean, Mark, you've sold millions of books. Is that is that an exaggeration? Or I, I think you have, right? By God's yeah. grace, that's true. Yeah. So he's like sold millions of books, apologetics. Uh, close friends with Lee Strobel, a just amazing apologist. Most people watching this will know Mark, but I didn't, um, I had never met Mark. And so it was after the process of me actually starting to write this book that I met Mark. And Mark has been so on board with this message of this book. And so Mark, you, throughout this whole process of me writing the book, um, you even helped review a chapter for me. You helped give me feedback. Uh, you would send me emails of encouraging, uh, just, you know, keep going, you're doing such important work and you'd send me quotes, Hey, this might be good to put in your book and just so encouraging through this whole process. And, um, so I've, I've always wanted to ask you, what is it about this particular message that you were just, you were so on board with it right from the start and such an encouragement through this whole process. So what is it about this message that, that you feel is so important? Well, uh, thanks for asking. And again, it's just a privilege to be here, Elisa. And I am excited about this book. I hope everyone picks it up uh, right away and gets copies for their friends and really spreads the word around. Um, you said I'm an apologist, which is true. But more than that, I'm an evangelist. And yeah. as I try to spread the gospel and help people come to know Christ personally, what I have seen uh, over the years, and it's part of my story that I'll go back to, I've seen how it stops people in their tracks when they hear other people who claim to be Christians, you know, discounting the validity of what the Bible teaches, of the authority of Scripture itself, um, mm -hmm. of the cardinal doctrines of the Christian faith. Um, it's one thing to have an atheist or a skeptic or someone that you know is outside the family attack your faith. But when it's someone who's like in your case, a pastor or in my case, and I'll just jump back briefly to the story. In my case, it was a Christian um, professor. I was at a. Mm. But a man who was known as a Christian was a philosophy professor. He was actually the campus pastor at the secular, secular university, but very liberal, as I found mm. out. And so he would talk to our class and he'd say, well, yes, you know, there, there is a God, but most of you have outmoded uh, views of it. He was actually a panentheist, yeah. um, which some of our readers will know. But he said, you know, you have traditional views based on literal readings of the scripture. But, you know, the Bible contains God's word, but it doesn't it is not all true. It's not all authoritative and so forth. Uh, he said, you believe that God is omnipotent. Well, he, he, he has the power of persuasion and you believe that he's um, you know, he, he would just use all these 
terms that I had grown up with and that I knew were orthodox and then redefine them. And what I found it doing to me and the other classmates was undermining our faith. And again, it would be like, it'd be one thing if it was a Richard Dawkins saying our faith is nonsense. But this was a Protestant mm. minister yeah. undermining our faith. So it launched me, much like you years earlier, launched me into all kinds of study and um, soul searching and looking at this and to say, does what I believe really make sense? Is there good reason for it? And I reached my conclusions and it reinforced my faith in the long run, but I don't think it did that with a lot of my fellow students. And so no. I really believe in the danger of you know, kind of the enemy within in the church undermining the faith of young believers. And I think your book is the best answer to that that I have seen. Oh. And uh, you just did an excellent job with this, Elisa. So I'm a true cheerleader and true supporter and uh, just want to encourage everyone to really study this book and benefit from it. Well, Mark, that is so kind of you to say. And and so everyone watching can see the encouragement Mark has been <laughs> through this whole process. <laughs> And, um, and it's, I didn't know that about your story, Mark. And I think that we all can relate with having friends who we've watched kind of go down these paths. And it's hard to understand when you see all this evidence and you, you get all this truth and you're like, wait, where are you going? Because there's so much, so much good reasons to believe that Christianity is true and the, the resurrection of Jesus happened and that the Bible is God's word. And, and so I'm, I'm thankful for, for your work. We're going we're gonna to actually give away our first prize in just a moment. And our first prize is going to be one of Mark's books. But just before we do that, Mark, I wonder if you'd be up for something. One thing we thought might, that might be fun for this launch party is to have each of the guests, all in good fun, respond or react to a progressive Christian meme. Because one of the main things people ask me about is, oh, I saw this meme and it totally threw me off because it seems like it's based on some truth, but it's kind of got a little twist on it. And so uh, all in good fun, I thought it might be fun to ask each guest to do that. So are you up for that for tonight? Yes. Okay. So I'm do we ready. have that that we can put on the screen for Mark to respond to? Oh, there it is. Can you see it, Mark? Yes. Okay. So it says... First Corinthians 15, 22 to 23, for as in Adam all die, or in Christ shall all be made alive. Even so, all mankind. So, Elisa, what's your, what's your take on this? I want to hear from well, both of you. They're, they're making a case for universalism, I think. Yeah. Right, Mark? I is that what so. you're getting? Oh. So what's your reaction to this? Yeah, and there, here's, again, what we were just talking about. It's It's... It's tricky because it's quoting right out of a Bible verse. It's not someone just attacking our faith. It's someone who claims to believe as we do, more or less, and they're quoting Bible verses. And by the way, the same thing is in, I think it's Romans 5, where Paul talks about the first Adam and sin came into the world through the first Adam, and then the second Adam, uh, Jesus, and, and through him, life came to all. And so you say, okay, well, then everyone is saved. We're all fine. I'm, uh, you know, I'm good. You're good. And there's a half truth there. And that mm -hmm. half truth, at least for me, I, I don't believe in limited atonement. I, I believe that Jesus died for the sins of the world. It makes that real clear in uh, 1 John that he died not just for our sins, but for the sins of all. So I, I think that's what it's saying, that, that salvation has been purchased on the cross by Christ for all. But to stop there is to overlook the fact that scripture has to interpret scripture. You have to look at all of what God's word says. And that is all, but must be received. You know, first John, no, John chapter one, verse 12 says, but as many as received him to them ah. give the right to them children of God. And Jesus warned about the broad path and the narrow path and that, you know, broad is the road to destruction and many go down that path. Narrow is the path to truth and to life. And he is that path for us. So uh, yes, salvation is available for all, but it doesn't automatically get applied to everyone's account. You have to say yes to Christ to receive him. Love it. Well, that was an awesome answer, Mark. And all the Calvinists are going to email me now. So <laughs> that's okay. There's no Calvinists here on camera. 
<laughs> well, you know, there's a lot of Calvinists that don't accept limited atonement. Yeah. They accept part of it, but, um, yeah. If I could just say, I don't know how soon we, we got to go, but if I just got to throw in something for you, Elisa, I know you've met yeah. my son, Matthew, who's a yes. full-time He's been apologist. on my podcast. He's been on my yeah, podcast. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And full-time speaker and so on. And he somehow managed to get an advanced copy of the book. And uh, this week he, he spent a long time just going through the whole thing. And I love, he called me, he was so excited about it. I think he posted about it. Um, but Matthew Middleberg said this, and I loved it. Um, he, he grew up with Lee Strobel being, you know, Uncle Lee to him. We're not actually related, but Lee and I have been ministry partners for many years. And then one of my best friends was also Nabil Qureshi, and uh, yeah. the, the former Muslim who wrote Seeking yeah. Allah, Finding Jesus, and then tragically died of cancer more recently. But here's what Matthew said. He said, Elisa's book, this book reminds me of those two books. He said, oh, wow. it reminds me of Lee Strobel's Case for Christ, because that was based on the story of a former atheist and the journey he goes through. But he, he uh, very creatively weaves the truth around his own testimony. Mm. And that book has sold like five million copies and it yeah. just impacted. I hear of people coming to Christ through that book almost every week. Wow. Uh, sometimes daily. Um, And then he said, it also reminds me of Nabil's book, which I was also involved. In fact, I told Nabil back in the day, you got to write like Lee did, wrap the truth that, you know, you're trying to convey around your testimony, your story. And Nabil did that. I mean, Nabil's book is phenomenal, Seeking Allah from Jesus. And both of those books are mega bestsellers and they've just impacted whole generations. Well, Matthew said, you know, this book by Elisa, another gospel, is in the vein of those books. It's her conveying the truth that she thinks we need to know uh, through her testimony, you know, kind of wrapped around her experience. And I thought that's a great way to describe it. And that's why it's not some dry theology book or, you know, some book just to build the truth. It's your story. And that, that makes it fascinating and interesting while learning all kinds of truth when you read it. So I think that's pretty high praise from a younger generation apologist, and I couldn't agree more. I just Oh, man. Uh, I don't even know what to say. That's so kind. I love both those books, and that's an honor to be compared with that. So we're going to give away uh, one of Mark's books. Do we have a – I don't have it in front of me which one we decided we were going to give away. Do you guys have a photo of that one by any chance? No, no, I don't know what don't. it is. Okay, you, that's I okay. Well, I don't know if you told us. It's going to be a good one. <laughs> it's going to be a good one. We're going to give one of Mark's books away. Mark, which book should we give away? You tell us. Uh, maybe my book, if, 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 if you have options, Confident Faith, the book where Confident, I give That's a good one. Confident Faith. Faith. All right. Okay, Confident so we're going to have the, have we're gonna the announce winner. The winner. So, my husband is random, he's doing a randomizer and then picking a winner based in the comments and he'll pick one from each platform. So this first platform is from my YouTube and the winner is Jenna Touchberry. So Jenna, you've just won Confident Faith by Mark Middleberg. To claim your prize, you uh, send an email to contact at alisachilders.com and we'll get you all set up with the book. We'll send it out to you. And so Jenna Touchberry, you just won Mark's book. Mark, thank you so much for being on t- uh, tonight. I so appreciate you taking the time. You're welcome. And if you send me Jenna's address, I'll write in a book and mail it oh. to you. Oh, how about that? Oh, look at you, wow. Jenna. You better go ahead. Come on through now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Mark. God Jenna bless. has Thanks. acknowledged. She said, holla. Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Now, we have our next guest waiting. Oh, boy. Okay. So I want to remind everyone, because we want to get everyone in the Facebook group for the next live stream. We don't want to see the, the name yet. Oh, I'm trying to hide it. So, uh... <laughs> Anyways, so you can go pre-order your book. You can go to Amazon and pre-order, and then you'll be able to join Elisa's second live stream tonight that's immediately following this one, but you have to have your receipt, and then you're going to type that information in, and you can join her Facebook group. Yes. So search for the Another Gospel uh, Book Discussion Group. So um, let's see. All right, we're going to have our friend... Natasha Crane. Yes. Natasha. 
Where is she? All her camera's oh, not on. So You can't see me. Okay, let me see. Um, this is live TV. And so Natasha's actually calling from her car because her kids are at soccer practice. Oh, there it is. Wow. There she is in her car. Natasha. Just keep it all the way real. There yes. she is. <laughs> so, yes. So Natasha with, with it's each still such a close up because I'm used to sitting behind like the webcam at my desk, which is a lot oh, further. Yes. <laughs> Hello, I'm really big. All right, made oh, it. That's great. Well, we're so glad you're here. So I, with each guest, I'm just telling a little story of the role you played in getting this book out to the world. And Natasha literally pushed this book out into the world. And so I'm going to tell you why. So Natasha had emailed me several times, like, you really need to write a book on progressive Christianity. And I was like, well, maybe you can write a book on progressive Christianity. <laughs> and she's like, no, I've got like a four deal, whatever, four or five book deal. And I can't, I can't do that, but the world needs it and you're going to need to do it. And so it was an email I got from Natasha, uh, where that actually sent me into doing that two years of research where she, she, I remember the words she used. She said, I'm pushing you feel the push. (laughs) And that was her encouragement for me to dig in and really tune my head and my mind toward writing this book. So Natasha, I felt the push and I'm so thankful for it. I'm glad you're here tonight. Well, thank you. I'm honored to be part of your launch party. And it's so, so great that this book is coming out. I'm so excited for it. And I will be sharing it with everyone. It's it's really a fantastic book. And when I said that you should feel the push, this is everything that I was hoping you would do and so much more. Mm-hmm. It's, it's incredible. So congratulations on the release. Oh, thank you so much. Well, I'm so glad that you get to be a part of the celebration. One of the things that we're doing with each guest is just all in good fun. We're having you react to a progressive Christian meme. So if you're up for it, we will put one up on the screen and get your reaction. So what do you think? Sure. Let's try it. Okay, let's do this. You have uh, Natasha's progressive Christian meme to respond to. This year, I want to be more like Jesus. Hang out with sinners upset religious people tell stories that make people think choose unpopular friends be kind loving and merciful take naps on boats (laughs) so this strikes me is just exactly what you see so often in social media as a meme like this it sounds really good you can imagine just thousands of people clicking like and share on this, right? Like, I mean, you can just feel that coming through. And and it sounds really good, but I think it's so indicative of just how so often people today are kind of picking the Jesus that they want to believe in, that they want to worship and kind of a cutesy version. You know, we're taking naps on the boat. That's nice and everything. But I think that a lot of times it comes down to two things, really. Number one is that a lot of times people are mischaracterizing something about Jesus. And number two, they leave stuff out altogether. So when you look at this and you see that he's, I think it said, hanging out with sinners, right? Well, even though it doesn't come right out and say it, the implication is kind of, hey, Jesus just, you know, he didn't care what people were doing. He was just kind of hanging out with whoever and he wasn't excluding anyone. But in reality, Jesus was hanging out with sinners so that he could proclaim the kingdom and that he could call them to repentance. So this Mm. wasn't some kind of act of affirmation by him to sit down with sinners. And that's kind of the implication that you see here. And then the other thing that strikes me is that there's a whole part of Jesus that gets left out here. You know, they obviously didn't include on the meme. I want to be more like Jesus. I want to preach about the reality of hell. And I want to talk about final judgment. And I want to warn people about what happens when the sheep and the goats are divided. You don't see that kind of thing. So it's, it's very much a selective Jesus. There's that mm-hmm. mischaracterization and there's the leaving stuff out altogether. But this is the kind of thing that looks good. It sounds good. People love to share it. And that's what's so dangerous about it. And that's why I love this book, because it just explains why these things go so wrong, even though they sound good and they're easy to consume. Natasha, you better preach. Natasha is that's so conversant about it's Jesus. It's almost like she yes. just wrote a book about the, Jesus. Fire for her. Did she get that? Did she get that? Yeah. Does she get the dancers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I mean, we, we do need a little choir for you. You're preaching. That's a good word. That was a good word. Yeah, here we go. Yes. Oh, there we go. Oh, shit. <laughs> this is Jesus' soccer practice. I'm telling you. I'm feeling it. Yes. Now, we're at the black church. This is exactly what we would do. Yes, we would. We would say that word right there. That was a good one. That was a good one. Somebody would feed you. Yes, we would. Oh, my goodness. Everybody watching knows why.
I, I love Natasha, and she's a writer who writes for Christian parents. She has an amazing book called Talking to Your Kids About Jesus. I endorsed it because it's fire, just like her response to that meme. So the winner of that book is, uh, drum roll please, oh boy, where, where'd it go? Where did it go? Okay, so this is from the Center for Biblical Unity page. The winner of Natasha's book is... Betsy Wilford. She's on uh she's on in Florida. Yeah, she's on uh, right. staff with crew. Yes. All right. Well so. Betsy, send an email to con- yeah, there, yeah, she, Natasha's saying hi. Send an email to contact at elisachilders.com and we'll get you set up with your book. Natasha, thank you so much for joining us. I'm so glad you got to be a part of it. Yeah, thanks for having me, Elisa, and congratulations again. Thank you. Okay, we want to remind people again, go pre-order your book so you can join Alisa's private Facebook group that's going to have a separate live stream after this one. Yes. And so you want to do that. And I've asked, uh, my daughter Emily is helping us out as kind of an informal moderator. So I've asked her to post that link um, in all the chats for everyone. So we're going to, hopefully those will pop up here in a minute. And... Congrats, Betsy. Yes, 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 yes. And woo, Natasha, she she'll be playing. She will bring you all the she'll truth. Play. Yeah, <laughs> all you the get truth. Your fan out, for Natasha. You got to get your fan out for yes. her. Yes, <laughs> or a little yeah. praise break. I was like, yes. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, I think we have another guest. Yes, we have another guest. Who will it be? Who will it be? <laughs> Let's see. Oh, oh. I think, I well, think we're. Oh, she's sideways. Wait, she's side. Why are you sideways? <laughs> sideways, TC. Oh. There we go. There we go. There we go. Yay. So TC, I, TC, with each guest, I've given a little background about the role this person's played in helping get this book out into the world. So I wanted you to be a part of this. TC is also an author and speaker, wonderful apologist. And also one of my closest friends. So we go and we walk out in the woods and we walk around the park and we talk and we process things together. And so TC has been a constant encouragement to me just as a friend throughout this whole thing. In fact, we were sobbing about it last night, just how the Lord had brought us together in our friendship. And so TC, I'm so glad you're here. Oh my gosh, this is such a fun party. (laughs) I'm loving all this it makes me want to get up and dance. And I'm just so thrilled, thrilled for you as my friend and just excited to see this book getting out. So, awesome. yeah. Well, you've had a huge role to play in that just with your encouragement and also just your your mind uh, helping me process thoughts. I would come to TC and say, OK, how about if I frame this this way or can can you read this chapter and see what you think? And so she was so helpful in so many different areas. Uh, but TC, one thing we're doing with this launch party is having guests react to a progressive Christian meme. Would you be up for that? Fun. Yes. OK, let's <laughs> I'll give it my best meme up there. <laughs> When I say I want a biblical wife, what people think I mean, I want a wife who is passive and subservient. What I really mean, I want a wife who is totally willing to drive a tent spike into a tyrant's head should the opportunity arise. (laughs) Oh, my word. What kind of mean is this? Of course, that's talking about JL, who is the the Kenite housewife that helped uh, Israel win the battle by by doing, you know, telling the leader of the opposite army, come and I'll let you rest. And then when he was sleeping, she, of course, I, I kind of like that story. I even yeah. Story, but <laughs> TC, what's your reaction to this meme? Yeah, well, um, there's a there's a few things that I think about it. The first one is just that uh, there's a couple of pretty big exaggerations being made. Um, Basically that this is something that the first option he gives that first statement is something many people would agree to or say. And also it's an exaggeration of what the Bible actually really teaches about submission. I think he's kind of overblowing that in a way. And so to me, I, I don't know a single person, a real life person who wants a wife like that or would even say that that's what the Bible's teaching. So to me, that's a straw man argument Mm. that's easy to knock down. Nobody would want that. And then again, and it also, I don't know if this is actually the right 
way to define it, but it felt like a false dilemma to me where you're right. given these two options that, but neither one of them really is the biblical definition of a wife. But I think what I would want is choice three, but it doesn't give you that. It's like you either need a wallflower or this psycho lady, you know, I <laughs> know, uh, um, but also both of them are just using the Bible again, kind of like Natasha mentioned and what we've seen using the, something related to the Bible, but not with sound hermeneutics. We don't have any context. We don't have any understanding. Um, we're using an Old Testament scripture as if it's prescriptive. Like, you know, biblically, women should be able to stake tyrants or something. That's not prescribed. Uh, so it's just kind of a hot mess of interpretive stuff that yeah. gives us this, like, you know, false decision to make. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, that yeah, that's and that's kind of what I thought. I actually kind of laughed when I saw it because I was like, I mean, that's funny, right? That's a funny meme, right? Yeah, it is funny. And I think probably if I got honest, there'd be some times that I wanted to be like the second option, but you know, but it isn't what that. Jesus would want. Yeah. Be angry, but don't sin. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, TC has written an amazing book called Lord, Where's My Calling? And she she's talking about the idea of calling. Uh, on on your life, but she weaves in so much apologetics and great stuff. So we've got a winner going to get TC's book, Lord, Where's My Calling? And that winner is going to be coming from my Facebook page. And the winner is BB Trimble. BB Trimble. So send an email to contact at elisachilders.com. We'll get you set up with the book. And TC, thank you so much for being a part of the thank show. You. Yeah, Bye. it was fun here. Bye, I wasn't trying to rush you off. Bye. I was just making sure that I said hello. <laughs> so, Alisa, one of the questions that was on the chat, and I can't find it back right now, but um, people were, were wanting to know, like, how much of the book is story and how much of it is an apologetics? Like, is mm. it mostly story with a dash of apologetics? Is it mostly apologetics where you're just kind of having a little story at the beginning of the chapter. Like, can you give us a, a flavor for how you did it? Yeah, it's not just like a story and then apologetics material. I tried to format it to where the whole book feels like a memoir. And uh, interestingly, when Mark mentioned Nabil Qureshi's book, Seeking Allah, Finding Jesus, that's that's how I felt when I was finished reading that book. I felt like I had read someone's memoir, just a story, but also like I learned a lot of theology, but I didn't realize I was learning theology. And so uh, I wrote the book in that format. I did my best to kind of follow the flow of Seeking All of Finding Jesus because I found that so impactful that I was never bored. I felt like I was just going with him on this journey. And so when the apologetics material comes in, it's coming, it's really coming from my story. So I'll I'll talk about the questions I was asking in my in my mind. I, I talk about um, where I looked for answers and what questions were birthed from that search and then how I answered those questions. And so so hopefully it will feel like you're reading a story, but you'll learn some apologetic stuff too. So it's really, I would say it's 50, 50, but it's all enmeshed together. So it's, uh, it's a little different in that sense. In fact, um, when I was researching for the book, I was reading so many different progressive Christian books. And the one thing that struck me was my decorations are falling. One thing that struck <laughs> me is, is man, they are great storytellers and that's what can be so persuasive for people. And so I thought, man, we gotta be, we gotta get better with telling, telling our stories and, mm -hmm. and being vulnerable to talk about our weaknesses and our doubts and our struggles. And so I tried to incorporate that style, but, but again, incorporate all of that important information that people want to know. Very good. Well, awesome. I just want to let everyone know we have about 450 people watching right now live yeah. between all the streams. So we want to say hello to everyone. And I'm Krista Bontrager. I'm Monique Dusan. And we are we have a little podcast called All the Things. Yeah, somebody was asking, who are these people? Yeah. Who like, are these people with like, Lisa? Some people are probably like, who, who are those chicks? I've never seen them before. <laughs> so. Well, they, you've both been on my podcast. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So you're, you're friends of, of what I do and I'm friends of, I've been on your podcast. Yes. We're just mystery buds. And yeah. yeah, I mean, in case you don't know, Elise is my auntie and you know, we just, we're just doing life together. Damn. 
That's yes. Right. Okay, we have another guest just waiting just to celebrate you and your book. All right, All let's right. get him on here. All right, Done. joining. He's joining. He's joining. Is this, is, this, is this there he is. There he is. Yes. Okay. So I am excited to introduce Mr. Jay Werner Wallace. Hey, how are you guys? <laughs> hey. Good to get to join you guys. Look at all of us. All of us. Do you see how, Lisa, we've all got, we've been influenced by, I think, Mike Winger online is the yes. first person who said yes. we put the lighting. colored lights <laughs> behind our backgrounds. And here we are yes. doing is this the craziest thing ever? I mean, it's ridiculous. Anyway. Yeah, it is. But I'm so glad you're here. So with each guest, I've been telling a little backstory of the role that you played in helping get this book out into the world. And so you have a very special role to play because earlier when I was telling my story, I mentioned that I was never going to start a blog. I was, I was like, the world has enough blogs. There are enough yeah. people giving their opinions. Yes. And then I went to the cross-examined instructor Academy and you were my first instructor. And I was petrified because if there was anybody that was the most intimidating person there would have been Frank Turek, but you were number okay. two. Okay, good. <laughs> and so good. you walked in the first day and I was like, Oh man. But you know, I, I presented my apologetics and you were so encouraging. And I remember something you said that week to the whole mm. group was that you all need to start putting this material out into the world because it's not right. like you're coming up with something new, but you can might bring it to a new audience. And that's when I went, oh, okay, maybe I should think about starting a blog and all this. So you were just, you played a huge role in encouraging me to just even get started with writing. So I'm so glad that you could join us tonight. Well, I, I'm glad we did that because that is part of what we talk about at cross exam instructors. I actually have a class I teach at Biola on this and I, we get a lot of students who come and they have spent their entire, uh, uh, academic career so far, they're getting a master's in apologetics at Biola. And so I have them for a class I call Applied Apologetics. And I just try to encourage them, look, you know, up to this point, you have been content consumers. Mm -hmm. At what point are you going to shift and become content creators? Especially when the world is so noisy and there are so many different people that you think, well, you know, somebody else has already written about that. And they've written about that better than I could. Not really. Uh, this is why, for example, your book is so uh, it's got some autobiographical aspects. It has uh, great storytelling. Uh, it, it actually captures who you are. Now, now think about that for a second. If you think about the progressive Christianity movement, it strikes me that a lot of who's leading this are creatives. Mm -hmm. And I have noticed a long time ago, uh, I don't talk a lot about politics on my work because I don't think politics change things. I hate to say that. I think we've thought that, hey, if we could just move the country in a certain way politically, but it turns out what shifts culture, like the old, uh, my big fat Greek wedding, right? The neck that turns the head <laughs> yeah. is, is our creatives. It's mm -hmm. the arts. The arts will, will lead us in a certain direction. And so it's not a coincidence, I think, that God has raised up an artist, you know, a singer, who to can actually confront ideas that in many ways are being made palatable to the church, even attractive to the church. Yeah. Because so many creatives, singers, um, th uh, creative thinkers have presented this in an emotionally compelling way, which is what the arts do. The arts touch your heart. And so they can, that, that's where, you know, of course, we know the heart is wicked, right? And it can lead our heads astray. So it's not a coincidence to me, it seems, that God has raised up a, a, a leader, you, uh, who's a creative, who can kind of speak from the same um, world that those people who are influencing us toward what's not true, uh, toward error, um, actually have the same kind of footing that they have. So I think it's, that's why this is such an, empowerful, uh, an important and powerful book. Well, thank you so much for that and for all your encouragement along the way. And, you know, Jim's always been available if I need to shoot him a little email question. He's always gets back with me with great advice. And for anyone who's not familiar with uh, Jay Warner Wallace, he's a, a, a Los Angeles homicide, uh, cold case homicide detective. And he wrote a book called Cold Case Christianity, which we're going to give a, a copy away in a moment. But I want to say something about that book, because when my faith was reconstructing, I read that book three times. It's wow. It was so valuable in helping me get to the bottom of why I could trust the gospels to tell me the truth about what was going on with Jesus. So we're going to give that away in a moment. But we've also been doing a fun little thing where we have our guests 
react to a progressive Christian meme. So I wonder if you'd be up okay, for that. Yeah, let me get my screen big enough so I can see this okay. with some, go for it. All right, let's do it. Okay, I see it now. All right, so um, let me- uh, Destruction of property is not a valid form of protest. Jesus. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So this is perfect for the police officer to right? answer. It's not like that it's perfect for the age in which we live right now, right? <laughs> I mean, I think part, part of the problem is, is that the, Jesus talks about he, his, his most um, aggressive kind of pushback are not about the, uh, the, the, the cultural issues of the day. They are theological pushbacks. What Jesus does is Jesus understands that the real, all of, all of our um, second level reactions to things, be it politics or be it culture, are really grounded in theology. And so the danger, the biggest danger is that we have theological mistakes that we make. Uh, and, those, and that's where, I, and, and also those theological mistakes can lead you to hell. I hate to say this, but this is what Jesus talked about. A lot of the stuff you're writing about in your book, has to be it has to deal with 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 theological assertions made by progressive Christianity. And it's not like we're saying, hey, we disagree, like we like red, you like blue. But we're saying that we disagree and that we love the things that are true about God that lead to life versus the things that are false about God that lead to death, spiritual death. This is really a, an issue of life or death on a spiritual level. And that's the kind of stuff that Jesus would turn a table for. Hmm. It's not like he's saying, you know, I'm turning a table because I, I'm upset about this aspect of your culture or your government or your society. It's that he knows that people's um, spiritual futures are hanging in the balance. So um, I think that's part of what we see uh, with the work that we're trying to do, you're trying to do, as you talk about the difference between these two uh, the theologies. This is not just a small issue of, of personal preference, even of our, our theological preferences. Look, there are some things that we would say are non-essentials that we can differ on. But what we're talking about here are differences on the essentials that are dangerous. So yeah. that's important for us to see that difference. Yeah. All right. Awesome. So we're going to give away a copy of Cold Case Christianity now. We're going over the winner of uh, Cold Case Christianity is from YouTube, and it's Patricia Hallam. So Patricia, you're getting Cold Case Christianity from Jay Warner Wallace. And uh, so I guys get to see you guys for a guys, second. They flashed so on the screen. Joining us. <laughs> yeah. So Patricia, send an email to contact at elisachilders.com. We'll get you all set up with that book. And anyway, yeah. Awesome. So Thanks, Jim, Jim, I have a question for you. Do you yeah. Since you met Monique at the last yes. CIA, would you like to give yes. Monique a little encouragement about writing a book no. about her oh, story? Oh, no. Oh, oh, absolutely. We'll see. No, and this is what we talk about. One of the things we talk about, we talk about what makes each of us so unique, right? That we can actually come at an issue in a unique way. There's stuff that Monique can write that I cannot write. I don't have the footing. To, I mean, I could, but I wouldn't be as credible. And so I think a lot of what we're trying to do is to see what is it about you, even the people who are watching, that is so unique that you have a special voice based on your experience, based on something you've studied, based on your life experience. A lot of Elisa came from her experience at a church, which was so, so powerful about watching your, your uh, presentation, Elisa, at, at uh, CIA, is that that was one of the more powerful things about that was that I got a chance to, to, to know you. And that's what's so great about this book is that it reads very quickly mm -hmm. and it's very personal. And I think it'll be very compelling for a lot of people who will read it. Amen to that. So, so Uncle Monique, Jim's no excuse, giving you Monique. some advice there. Yeah, you have to get going, Monique. There's no excuses, okay? We <laughs> expect a manuscript on the table within the next year. <laughs> yes. There it is. There it is. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, good. Thank you very okay. much. Do you remember? Cool. I remember at CIA. So we went to this conference, and Elisa and Jim and I were there. And um, he was. so we were talking about Elisa, and he goes, oh, so she's mentoring you. And I was like, yes. And we go back and forth and back and forth. And then he's like, and you need to do everything that she says. And he's so serious. And I was like, okay, okay, there it is. <laughs> well, I, this is what happened to me. You know, I, what happened to me was, I remember when I first submitted my manuscript, right? And I just threw it out to a few people to say, hey, would you be willing to endorse this to see if a publisher would be interested? One of the people I sent it to was Lee Strobel. He goes, well, you want me to write the forward for it? And I was just looking for him to write a quick endorsement if he would even like the idea. And he wants to write the forward. He came to me and asked to write the forward. So I said, you know what? Uh, I want to be that person for somebody else. Mm. 
mm-hmm. because I saw that happen for me. And, and I think all of us feel that way. I'm sure that you, Elisa feels that way. And Monique, you will feel that, feel that way once you have published your book, trying to help somebody else. So that's, this, right. that's, that's, how, it, that's how it works. All right. All Uncle right. Jim's giving you some advice there. There it is. There, it is. Right. there you go. There you go. Thank you so much, Jim. Thank it's good you. to see you. Yeah, thanks. It's good to see you, Lisa. Good. It's going to be great. I know the book's already doing fantastic. So thanks yeah. so much for writing it. Appreciate thanks. it. I'll see you guys later. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. How fun! We're getting to see a lot of, lot of friends, and we're introducing <laughs> apparently based on the comments some new friends to people. Yeah. So they're like, oh, I more people to follow. Oh, good. good. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Now and we know, and he's right. He said you have to do everything I say, Monique, and I've already told you to write a book. So where's my book? I, I just you know, seminary is a thing. It, <laughs> yeah, it's a thing. It's, it's been thing. taking up some time. But um I'll get on that. I I, I will get on the consideration of that. Yes. <laughs> okay, now we have another guest. Auntie, you are loved. Aww. You are so loved. Oh look! Uh, look, look who! Look who's hey, here, hey. Uncle Frank. Uncle Frank. <laughs> Frank, can you hear us? Can we hear you? I can hear you now. Sorry, I was watching the feed. I was enthralled with the feed, and it's it's delayed. So I'm looking at that, going, "Oh, I guess I'm on." Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, with each guest, I've been giving a little backstory of the role they played in helping get this book out into the world, and you have played a tremendous role from the start all the way through the whole process. So I told the story of going to Cross Examined Instructor Academy, and I said that the most intimidating person there was Frank Turek. The second one was Jay Warner Wallace. And of course, those are both the instructors I get for when I go to CIA. So I had Jay Warner Wallace first, and then I had Frank the next day. And when I presented, uh, Frank, you were so encouraging. You encouraged me to start a blog, and I did that. And you you had me on your show, and you just continued to encourage me over the years and even brought me on as an instructor for the cross examined Instructor Academy. You were very encouraging to me to even write a book in the first place. And so the, just your, your influence on this happening is just massive. So I want to just thank you in front of all these people for the role you've played and the encouragement you've given me throughout this whole process from starting a blog to publishing a book. Well, I want to thank you for actually doing it because as you know, we've done CIA for 13 years now. So we probably have put through between five and 600 students and uh, very few of them actually do what we tell them to do. Wow. <laughs> so, you know, you're one of the few that did and Quite obviously, you're successful at it because you have talent and you have brains and uh, you have what I think is probably the most important issue in America today when it comes to Christianity. It's Mm. not the stuff I do. It's not fighting atheists. It's really dealing with what you call progressive Christianity. And I think that's so important, Elisa, because the temptation now that people have to say they're Christians, but they get to make up all the rules themselves and not follow Jesus is so great that this book, Another Gospel, I think is a book everyone needs to read, whether you're leaning that way or not, because there's probably somebody in your house or somebody you know who is deciding that they're not going to follow Jesus completely. They'll follow him on some things, but on some of these other hot issues, particularly the sexual issues, no, no. I'm going to make up my own rules. So your book, Another Gospel, needs to be read by everyone. Thanks for writing it. Oh Well, thank you for saying that. And just for anyone who's unfamiliar with Frank's ministry and his work, he's written a book. Well, he's written a couple of really, really great books and contributed to a lot of books. Um, but I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist is a book he co-wrote with Norm Geisler, uh, who is is in heaven now, but uh, it, it was one of the books that God used after my faith had kind of reconstructed, I I got my hands on this book and I thought, this is the book. This is the book every Christian needs to read to give them a really solid foundation to know why they believe that truth exists, that God exists, the Bible is God's word, the resurrection of Jesus happened. It it walks you through all of that. So in a moment, we're going to be giving away a copy of I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist to someone. But before we do that, one fun little thing we're doing on the program tonight is having each guest respond or react to a progressive Christian meme. So if you're up for that, we'll put one up on the screen for you. What do you think, Frank? Uh, okay. Let me see, see it? it. Okay. 
I told you not to wear mixed fabrics. Enjoy eternity. I love you. LOL. You know, that's why I gave up polyester. Just because uh-uh. of the Old Testament. I'm telling you. That's why. I did. And the other reason I gave polyester. it up is because I was in the Navy for so many years wearing a polyester uniform in 95 degree heat. It would just stick to you. So I said, you know, God was right. I'm just going to go straight cotton. None of this poly cotton deal. I'm going straight cotton or wiki material. Okay. Actually, that's one of the silliest memes out there because, as you well know, Elisa, um, the old covenant is obsolete. The old covenant, according to the even to the writer of Hebrews, the Hebrews 8.13 says the old covenant is obsolete. Those special laws in the Old Testament were just for Israel to make them separate from the people around them. Holiness just didn't mean moral holiness. It, may, it meant to be separate, to be set apart. And so there were many of these, what we might consider now to be kind of odd laws for Israel, but they were merely meant to keep Israel separate from the pagan influences around them. And so the Old Testament, from all the way from Exodus 20, right through the end of Deuteronomy, that old covenant no longer applies to Christians, or never did apply to Christians. It doesn't apply to anybody uh, living today, uh, because you couldn't even live up to it anyway today. There's no temple to sacrifice anything to. So everything from the Ten Commandments right on through Deuteronomy no longer applies. And the reason the Ten Commandments apply to us today, at least nine of the ten do, is because they're repeated in the New Testament, not because they're part of the ten in Exodus 20. So when when atheists put memes up like that, they simply don't understand Christian theology, and quite frankly, fr- uh, quite frankly, a lot of Christians don't understand it either. Well, I think that's why we find memes like this on progressive Christian pages, because that was one thing I learned when I was uh, studying apologetics, was that a lot of the claims that are made by atheists are the same claims being made by progressive Christians. That's why books like I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist were so helpful to me, which we're going to give away and so we're going to go over back over to YouTube for this one. And the winner of I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist is Owen Runk. So, Owen, you're getting I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist. Send an email to contact at elisachilders.com and we'll get you all set up. Oh, but- Elise, I hate to tell you this, but that's a pseudonym my mom uses. Oh. <laughs> so you, you've, she, just, you've just she, given the book away to my mom, you know. Oh, <laughs> is it really? No, you're joking, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get, we'll get your mom one anyway. We'll get her one too. But <laughs> oh, oh no, she'll get you one. Okay, Give yeah. <laughs> I'm sure I remember you saying once on your program, I don't have enough faith to be an atheist TV show, that your, your one viewer was your mom. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's, she's... It was me and your mom. We were both watching. <laughs> That's right. Hey, I got to say one other thing before we go. I know you got Greg on deck, um, but I got to say this. This is extremely important uh, for people that are about to read Elise's book. First of all, you're going to get a lot out of the book. It's very easy to read, and it's very applicable. Uh, Elise and I have talked about this before. I really have – I I know why we call them progressive Christians – but I really have a problem, A, with calling them progressive because they're not progressive. And number two, I also have a problem with calling them Christians because they're not Christians. I mean, if you're a, if, if you're a Buddhist, you follow Buddha. If you're an, a Muslim, you follow Allah. If you're a Christian, you should be following Jesus, right? Well, they don't. They, they disagree yeah. with Jesus and they want to do their own thing. They want another gospel. And, yeah. and so I think we need to point this out. It would be like if we were all uh, at, with, um, with Moses at waiting at the bottom of the Mount Sinai for Moses, and he comes down with the Ten Commandments, and he goes, here are the Ten Commandments from Yahweh. And we go, you know what? I don't like those ten. I've got my own ten. Would, would I be considered a follower of Yahweh if I did that? No. And, and you point out in the book Another Gospel, Elisa, the folks that, that, that are claiming to be progressive Christians— are denying the commands of Jesus and replacing them with their own dogmatic commands. Yeah. And they're trying to say, they, they, they try and think that they're just inclusive and they're letting everybody in. No, they're not. They wouldn't let us in their group. They exclude us. So they're not really Christians. I just want you, I just want everyone to know that. That's why you need to read another gospel. 
Yeah, and that is what I argue in the book is that what we're looking at is not just a group of Christians who have changed their mind on some social issues or something like that. It's a different God with a different Jesus, and it's a God that can't save you. And that that is what I argue for in my book. So, so Frank, yeah, I appreciate you saying that because it really is like a play on language. It's I think there's a G.K. Chesterton quote that says, uh, when you find one person progressing toward a madhouse, he, it's likely he's just made a splendid escape from another madhouse. You know, and I think that's <laughs> you, can, you can progress toward falling off a cliff. Progress isn't always a good thing. But that's right. um, anyway, Frank, thanks so much for being on uh, and for joining us to celebrate the book and for endorsing the book. And we're going to get your book out to Owen Runk, <laughs> and we'll, unless that's your All mom, right. and then we'll we'll fix it. But <laughs> thanks. For okay. Being hey, on. hey. Next week we're doing radio, right? Yes. I, I, are we? I don't know. I've well, got some- I'm, I'm asking you right now. Oh, I'm going to yeah, email of you. Course. Of course. We've got to do radio on the book next week. So guys, listen to the I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist podcast. We'll have Elisa on for next week. Make awesome. sure you get the book, Another Gospel. Read it before you read I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist because it's more relevant than that right now. Get it. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Frank. Thanks, Frank. Thank you. All right. See you guys. Bye. Thanks, Monique, Krista. All right. See ya. I love this comment in the in the YouTube uh, in the YouTube section here. It says you can always count on Frank to be Frank. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. You don't have to guess what he's thinking. I yeah, love you that. Don't have to <laughs> he's from I, Jersey. He's from. Yes. Yeah. Just say it like it is. Okay. Say it so like it is. we got a couple of. I'm going to read a couple comments here, Elisa, and um, then we're going to get the next the next guest on deck here. Um, Many people are getting their books. They're very excited and reading it on Kindle. And I thought maybe you could talk about the audio book. Uh, there was some questions about the audio book, Elisa. You guys, the audio book was just like a surreal experience. One of the things I listen to a lot of audio books. So I love when the author reads their own book. So it was really important to me to, to be the narrator voice for the audio book. Um, and so I, I, I mean, Tyndale was great. They, they totally agreed to that, but I just kept asking, like, I get to do the voice, right? I get to do the voice. And so when I went in to record the book, it was like, it's like when you have a baby and then you're just holding your baby and looking at your baby. I felt like it was just a chance to just look at my baby and read through the whole book and get to uh, just just read it the way I would want it to be read. And so it's a really special um version of the book for me because I, I just, I really got to just read it from my heart. And um, so that's already up for pre-order. Although, you know, the book comes out tomorrow. So I don't know if uh, that's goes live at midnight tonight or something. I don't know how that works on Audible or on the other formats that you can get the audio book, but it is available. And I loved recording that. It was so special. Okay. One other quick question for you and Monique. Um, someone's asking on YouTube, what do critical theory and progressive Christianity have in common they both a mess <laughs> i'll let well, you go first <laughs> well i would say this so um i only became aware of the term critical theory more recently over the last maybe year year and a half in fact i had written most of the book before i even knew what that was um so i i noticed though that the the, the gospel that the progressive christians would put in place of the historic Christian gospel, which would be more along the lines of the, you know, God's re the proclamation of the good news of salvation, redemption from sin and reconciliation to God. They would replace that with this uh, more of a social justice type of gospel. Now, I didn't know to call it critical theory yet, but then when I became aware of critical theory, I still had some time. So I did put a little section of, of about that in the book, but I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that for progressive Christians, the work that Monique's doing to, to expose that type of ideology, critical theory, that literally has become the gospel for progressive Christians. So progressive Christians deny a whole lot of things, but what they affirm is critical theory. And that kind of takes the place of their gospel. So yeah. in, in that sense, that's kind of where you, your ministry and Elisa's ministry kind of it, intersect. intersect. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I would say that in, in enveloping a critical theory, critical race theory um, worldview, because it's so interconnected with so many other movements between like LGBTQ, feminism, you know, all of these other um 
movements that are a part of this critical theory movement, what you find is that in affirming um, one, you can't not affirm the others. And if you're looking for, you know, a place to worship and a place that affirms all of these other things, it's going to be a progressive church. You're, you're, you know, historically Christian rooted and grounded within 2000 plus years of the faith are not going to affirm all of these other movements. And so it, it, it definitely leads right in and they, they um, definitely intersect. Very good. All right. Let's get our next surprise guest up here. I'm going to let him in. There he is. There he is. Mr. Greg Kunkel. I feel I should be wearing one of those hats on with all the confetti going on here, party time kind of thing. Well, we're so glad you're here, Greg. Well, congratulations. And uh, just wanted to let you know and your viewers know that of all of the millions of books in the Amazon universe, there are only 1,383 that are selling more than yours right now. Wow. And wow. My, my book is not one of them. <laughs> you're, you're leaving me in the dust right now. So oh, congratulations man. to you. This is really, really good news. You're actually number four in apologetics at the moment. And you, this doesn't even sell till tomorrow, right? As, I mean, it yeah. officially. So you're number four right now. And you were beaten out by um, Lee Strobel and C.S. Lewis. So, you know, wow. you're in very good company. Yeah. Wow. That's congratulations. amazing. I did not know that. I hadn't seen that yet. So. That's amazing. I don't quite know what to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just telling you, it's really good news. Yes. Well, that does sound like good news. <laughs> and to give the guests a little background on Greg, Greg is a wonderful author, um, speaker, apologist. He's got a great radio program. Uh, Stand to Reason is his ministry. His book, uh, Tactics and Story of Reality, are two of the best Christian books that are out there. I mean, all the authors I've had on tonight have written tremendous books that would be in my top 10 for sure. And, uh, but, but Greg's also in that, in that group of just amazing authors who wrote books that helped me on my journey. And so we're going to give away uh, one of your books. We'll probably give away tactics, I think, uh, in just a moment. Right. But I want to give a little backstory to the role you played in this book, Getting Out Into the World. So, of course, you know, all the people that I've had on tonight are people that I looked up to and learned from so much, even before I ever had a blog, before I even ever thought I would have a blog. Mm. These are the people I was learning from and reading, reading books from. And so, Greg, a couple of years ago, uh, about the time I started to think about writing a book, it was right after I got that email from Natasha that said, feel the push. And I felt the push and I said, OK, I need to, to, to start thinking about this. I attended the that's actually why I attended the advanced cross-examined instructor academy right. which is something that frank put on that was the first time i actually remember you i know yeah. that you were at an earlier one and i had even juried one of your talks but you know yeah. it's like old timers disease those yeah. things just go away you and totally forgot me you totally <laughs> forgot about me but that's okay <laughs> because what really mattered was that at this advanced cia we got a little bit more of one-on-one -on -one time with different right for more specialized needs. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that was offered was a writing critique. So I, you, you could sit with Greg Kokel, one of the greatest writers in the, in the world, and have him read <laughs> something you wrote and tell you how terrible it is. And so, <laughs> so I remember getting to sit with you, and you were tough on me, Greg. You were really tough on what I wrote. And I remember thinking, OK, I'm either going to quit or I am going to dig in so hard that I am going to become uh, like I'm going to work so hard. And I'm glad I chose the latter. And I'm glad yeah. for that push you gave me because it like it snapped me to attention. And I thought I have to really hone my craft and become mm. a, a better writer if I'm going to write a book. Well, <laughs> you certainly uh, did that. And I remember sometime after that conversation, because that was the first time you actually came up on my kind of conscious radar. We had done this thing with one of your talks, and I critiqued that when you gave a pre presentation at the last CIA, the regular CIA. And I imagine I was pretty tough then, since I try to be with everybody for their benefit. And um, I don't know, when we met together to talk about your writing, I often will ask a person, are you looking for a critique or are you looking for encouragement? Mm 
Because mm-hmm. a lot of people ask for a critique and what they want is encouragement. They want to find me to find the nice things and say the nice things. Now, I'll give that if that's what they want. But if somebody who wants to be critiqued, I'm going to try to bring a professional eye to the to the enterprise. And, and uh, you are an excellent student and listen carefully. And we, we had some things to say. And then the next time you came up on my radar was when I read a piece that you had blogged on about progressive Christianity. And that was so well done. I thought, wow, this gal has learned a lot in a short time. Uh, and so I contacted you uh, and I said, you know, you ought to f- you ought to find a, a publisher and see about getting a, a, a book project because and I'll, if I can encourage you in that, I wanted to do that. But that's how good the writing actually was. And, and that kind of praise comes does not come frequently from me. It was very good writing. And of course, now we have your book being launched officially tomorrow and uh, everyone can see um, what I was talking about, the the lucid, insightful uh, treatment of a very important topic. Well, and I was also really thankful when I sent Greg, I sent you a a advanced copy of the book. I think it wasn't even printed yet. It was an an electronic copy. Mm -hmm. And I had them printed out and they, and they, because I like to read the paper. It's up on my wall over here. (laughs) You like it's all bound. That's it. That's it. You can see it right up there. (laughs) And and you, you got on Skype with me and you went, you made notes on the book Uh and you walked me through all your notes through my entire book. And I am so thankful for that. I just can't even tell you. I'm like, I told my husband, I'm like, yeah, Greg Kokel's going to Skype me with his notes on my book. Like, who gets that? Who gets that? So honestly, Greg, your your influence on the actual writing of the book was so beneficial and so huge. And I just, it's such an honor, especially, you know, just the, the caliber of writer that you are. So I'm so thankful for that. Mm. And uh, one of the fun things we're doing tonight is, if you're up for it, we're having all of our guests respond or react to a progressive Christian meme. So mm-hmm. would you be up for that? Sure, of course. Okay, let's let's put one on the screen for Greg, and we'll see what he has to say. Jesus is saying, let me in. Why? So I can save you. From what? From what I'm going to do if you don't let me in. <laughs> That's a mess. <laughs> this is this is and we're all laughing because this is kind of funny um and uh we know it's a distorted characterization of of what jesus has in mind but it is kind of a funny way to put it because there's a, a in one sense i guess i could say there is a measure of truth in this okay and there's a measure of truth in the sense that um it, it's almost similar to when the the progressive crowd says something like well you know the this the blood tone the the blood atonement or the substitutionary atonement is kind of like divine child abuse well kind of in a way because it is god punishing his child okay so you could characterize that but what you do when you say it that way is you characterize it in a way that's distorted so much that it makes god sound vicious instead of gracious and and, and this is this is what's going on here i mean john 3:16 says god so loved the world that he gave his son all right but he did so with good reason with the child's permission and not for the pleasure of the abuse but for the greatness of the gift, this is why he is willing to do it. And so in that case, there's a sweet truth that is put so negatively, it takes the beauty out of what God did and it makes it look ugly, okay? Mm-hmm. It twists God's goodness and it makes it look like badness. And that's the same thing that's going on in this particular meme. You know, like I said, when I saw it first, I thought, oh, that's kind of funny. It's a clever way to put it, but I realize where it's coming from. And so consider this and that meme, the let me in is really analogous to a sinner's repentance. This is kind of a takeoff of the revelation passage. I'm knocking on the door and if you come in, I will dine with you and sup with you and, and be and have fellowship and that kind of thing. It's an appeal to a wayward church in the book of Revelation. So, so Jesus isn't just demanding that you open the door so he can barge in where he doesn't belong. He wants to give something valuable. So let me in is analogous to a sinner's repentance, which is the opening the door. It's not an intrusion by Jesus intruding to force his way in where he doesn't belong, okay? And uh, the let me save you is to provide a means of rescue for something you desperately need to be rescued from. And the phrase, what I'm going to do to you, is really analogous to God's justice, which is a good thing, 
Uh, but it's made to sound like Jesus' petty anger for being snubbed. You know, and the truth is that Jesus calls us away from a destructively sinful lifestyle that will have bitter consequences if we continue in it. And he invites us to experience a gracious forgiveness when uh, when what we deserve is actually punishment. And he paid the price, a bitter price for that forgiveness to secure it for us. And so it seems to me that the person who wrote this meme does not understand what Jesus actually did. They don't understand the gravity of sin. They don't understand the weight of God's justice. Uh, they don't understand the expansiveness of his redemptive, redemptive love. Uh, rather, the way they look at this is, uh, let me in or I'm gonna kick your butt, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. And as you have um, pointed out before, uh, Elisa, um, there is no good news in progressive theology. And I think that's partly because they don't take the bad news seriously, but instead mm -hmm. they mock it. They make fun yeah. of it. And that's what this meme is doing. It's taking something beautiful and it's characterizing it in a way that makes it look ugly. And that's yeah. sad. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, you can obviously see the wisdom that Greg has to, to give to the world. So we're going to give one of uh, Greg's books away. We're going to go back to Facebook on mine. So Greg, the winner of Tactics, we're going to send a copy of Tactics over to Carol Klutz Regley. So Carol, you're getting Tactics by Greg Kokel. It's a life-changing book. It will really help you if you are not familiar with it. So send an email to contact at elisachilders.com and we will get you set up with your, your prize. But uh, Greg, thanks again for being here to celebrate this with us. What a special and fun night. And I'm glad you got to end cap it and, and be you're, you're our final guest of the night. So. Oh, okay, great. So I could talk on for a while now. <laughs> <laughs> Hey Greg, uh, oh. we had a we had a question for Greg. Uh, how how did your arm surgery go? Are you doing okay? Are you recovering? Yeah, I'm recovering. I'm just trying to see see. I'm, I'm in this thing here. Yeah. And to be honest with you, it's not. It's a week ago tomorrow morning that I had the surgery. It was rotator cuff basically stuff, and I've had it done before in the other arm. And you know, I didn't need too many drugs. I didn't have much pain. I'm off the pain meds now, and I didn't really need what I took. Probably they just made me feel better. And so uh, now I'm just on the mend. It's just going to take a couple of months to get kind of back to normal. The most frustrating thing is uh, I I feel like I'm in a straitjacket, and when you want to get work done that includes yeah. typing and stuff like that that's a little bit awkward but uh thank you for your concern and yeah. I'm, I'm i'm doing well and whoever prayed for me i appreciate that and keep it up the sooner i get out of this thing the better so i can get back to the most productive work i can do that's right well thanks and again, for thanks for coming to our party greg Krista, uh, thanks for the invitation, and uh, certainly appreciate all that you're doing. And I missed you at an event recently you were supposed to be at, but you didn't show up. But nice to see you here. And oh, <laughs> what was that? That would be oh, CIA. Calling her, <laughs> calling her out. Oh, yeah. Calling you out at the CIA. Well, that's right. We missed you there. Yeah, we missed you. you. So yeah. uh, anyway, so I'm glad to see your smiling face now. Oh, and Alisa, um, uh, you're doing great. And again, all oh, congratulations all the best in this book and we'll be talking tomorrow for a full hour on That's my right. own show yeah. and we'll be talking about the book and uh, the content of the book and having a good time chatting together yeah, tell people where they can find that and what time <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah, no, it's the Stand to Reason podcast, okay? Yeah. So you can find it wherever, you can get it on our website, for example. You can listen to it on our iPhone app. Uh, now I'm getting into technical, like, STR digital doctor. stuff here so I, I might get lost you can also find it um i think if you get your uh subscription or whatever to your podcast from itunes you can get it there and download that so there's a number of standard ways to get the stand to reason podcast radio show um uh, and and listen to it you can even go online and listen to it live while we're doing it and uh I don't think they'll see the video thing like we're seeing now, but uh, they can listen to it then. But uh, sooner, I mean, that gets posted uh, on Wednesday midday or something like that. We record it on Tuesday and we post it on Wednesday. So then you'll be you'll you'll be uh, moving forward, charging forward with that great book. And I'm going to keep my eye on it because I'm just thrilled to see it's doing so well already. Thanks so much, Greg. Very You're good. welcome. All right. Bye, Thank ladies. Thanks for being with you. us. Bye. Okay, Elisa, let's real quick let people know one more time. They can go pre-order your book yes. at Amazon and join your Facebook group. We've had some several questions now. They want to know 
how the live stream that you are going to do in your Facebook group is different than what we're doing right here. Cause we're going to sign off here in just mm-hmm. a couple of minutes. And then Elisa is going to go live in her special, another gospel Facebook group. And I'm going to ask um, Emily, uh, our informal moderator to go jump on all the feeds and put the links in for the pre-order book and for the Facebook group. So people can find you. So, um, yeah, just tell people again about pre-ordering. Yeah. What's different about the live stream I'm going to do in the group is I've prepared a lyrical dance number that I will not be performing. I'm just kidding. I will not be doing that. Um, but I could, (laughs) yeah. Um, so, uh, so the different, the, the live stream that will happen is, is happening in a private Facebook book club group. So this is not open to the public. This is something that you can only be a part of if you pre-order the book and then go request membership at this, uh, Facebook group, which I think they're putting links in so you can get over there. And what we're going to be doing, uh, at in about 30 minutes from now. So at eight o'clock, my time, eight o'clock central time, uh, six Pacific, uh, and nine o'clock Eastern, I'm going to go live with a another special guest, a secret surprise guest, and we're going to be doing one more giveaway in that live stream. Uh, but I'm also going to be interviewing an ex-progressive Christian named Josh Morris, who, uh, I mean, his story is phenomenal. It's, it's really amazing. He even has a tattoo that he got as a result of meeting Rob Bell once. I mean, he was all in and he, the Lord brought him back to uh, Orthodox uh, faith and, and uh, historic Christian. Christianity. And so he's going to talk with us a little bit about his story, but he's also going to take questions from you about, you know, I get people ask me all the time, how do I reach my progressive friends? What are some good questions to ask? You know, what's a good way to, to talk to them without putting them off. And so Josh is going to help us with some of those questions, but that's going to happen in the private Facebook live stream. And the only way to get in for that is to pre-order the book. And then you go to the link and request membership, and then it will prompt you to put in your receipt number and we, you, you will not get in without a receipt number. So make sure that you, you put that in there where you're supposed to put it in. We'll get you in. And then you can join us in 30 minutes for that live stream in that group. And it's going to be really fun. It'll be a little more intimate. Uh, it'll be, uh, I'm going to talk through how the book club's going to go. Oh, and that's the one thing I forgot to say is it's not just a live stream tonight. This private book club is actually, we're going to take six weeks and we're going to read through the book together. And at the end of every week, I'll be doing a live stream in the group where I'll talk through some points from the chapter. I'll take your questions. We'll have a great discussion. And already there are over a thousand people in this group and we're having amazing discussions already. It's just been so much fun. And it's been uh, the one thing I keep seeing over and over again from people are comments like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I have found other like-minded people. I felt so alone. I saw these red flags in my social media feeds and at church or wherever. And I finally have a place where I can talk about these things. And so I would love for you to join us over there. But the only way to do that is to pre-order and request membership and put in your receipt number. And that that is going to close tomorrow night at midnight because the book comes out tomorrow. So we're going to give you till midnight tomorrow night to get a into the group and be a part of it. But if you want to see the live stream tonight, you've got to do it in the next 30 minutes. Awesome, man. We just want to confirm that it's going to be at six o'clock Pacific, eight o'clock Central and nine o'clock Eastern. That's right. And the mountain right. people are just going to have to sort themselves. Yeah, All right. Yeah, I, don't know I don't know. I do not know what to tell the mountain people. You got <laughs> to go to Google. <laughs> not okay. Well, I think that's a wrap for this. Thank you, Elisa, for letting us be part of your official Virtual oh. launch party. Yes. You guys, Krista and Monique, I can't, I just, I can't even, I don't have words to thank you for just what an amazing event this was and how you just got so excited about it. You offered to do it and I am just blown away and I love both of your ministries. I'm so glad you've been on my podcast. I hope to do more podcasts together, more ministry together. I love you girls and I love what you're doing and I just, I'm so thankful for this launch party. This was really fun. Hey, we love you too, Auntie. I'm gonna probably coming to your house next week. Don't worry. <laughs> Do it. It's all ready for you. Got the I got the room all made up for you. Come on. <laughs> I just can't believe Elisa Childers knows who I am. Right. Oh, she wow. she's like my favorite apologist. Oh, I've worked man. with a lot of apologists, but. Yes. Definitely my favorite. It's just and an honor to to do this for you. Is mm-hmm. just our gift of just 
our love letter of telling you thank you for investing and sewing in us and and really you and natasha really helped mm-hmm. launch the center for biblical yeah. unity yeah um yeah. you guys were the the people who inadvertently launched a ministry and uh you know just That's sorry monique thank you there it is, there it is. That. you know you're you're now responsible for the book I know. And to the 450 people, people who are watching live um Thank you so much for being here. Thank yeah. you for rallying around Elisa as family should. Yes, yes. This book is going to be awesome. If you have not pre-ordered it, go pre-order it right now. Um, join the Facebook group and get in that secret Facebook party that's going to happen in about 30 minutes yep. at 8 o'clock Central. I think Julie asked. She said, can you please confirm that it's 8 o'clock Central? It is 8 o'clock Central. 8 o'clock Central. 6 yes. o'clock Pacific and 9 Eastern. You guys, this has been awesome. This has been so great. Yeah. And um, once again, I'm Krista Bontrager, and this is Monique Dusan, and we are together the podcast called All the Things. If you want to tune in live on Saturday nights, yeah. uh, we have wonderful guests and many of... Like Elisa. Like Elisa and some of the other people you've seen today. Yeah. Uh, we talk about current events in light of the historic Christian worldview. Uh, Monique's the founder of the Center for Biblical Unity, where we're engaging in a lot of conversations about race and unity from a historic Christian, Christian point of view. So if you want to kind of join what we're doing as well, we know you're here for Elisa, but we want to in- invite you to come check out our content as well. We love you, Lisa. I have a question. Cause somebody you. just posted yeah. this in on YouTube um, okay. to get to, okay. So they've put their information in and to get to the actual um, launch, not launch party, but the actual event, they just go uh-huh. to back to that page, right? They go to the Facebook page Facebook for the group. private group. Yeah. So yeah. it should be facebook.com slash another gospel book club. And, but you have to put your receipt number in. If you've, I see there are some requests here without receipt numbers. The moderators won't let you in yes. unless you come back and put in your receipt number so that we know that it's, it's people who have pre-ordered the book because it's a bonus for that. So make yes. sure you do that. And we have those links in the chats on all the sites. So go do it. Get your receipt numbers, people. All right. We're going to let you go because you have 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Bye, you guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.